Gallimera, Gallimera, Gallimera. Good morning, good morning, good morning. And as you can probably hear, the voice has uh, taken a bit of a hit after last night. Uh, we had an absolutely epic night last night in Magdalena's. We really did. Can I just thank all those people that turned out last night? I did put a little bit of a video clip up, uh, but trust me, things just got better and better and better after that video clip had gone up. Uh, last night, we were we were very, very busy. It was a bit like old times. I've got to be honest, there were a lot more uh, British singers than there were Dutch, uh, Danish or... Uh, people from other nations singing last night, which was good. It made my job a bit easier finding music, to be quite honest, and songs that people wanted to sing. And some of the talent we had in last night was absolutely incredible. So uh, last night was really good. Tonight, same of the same, uh, basically music video selection. Last night it was uh, movie uh, music. I don't know what I'm going to do tonight. I'll, I'll know when I get through the door, I'll, I'll be suddenly inspired. Uh, and then obviously, once we get a decent amount of tickets in, karaoke will start uh, once we get a decent amount. Now, I've got to say yesterday, lots of families, mainly families yesterday with lots of young children, some very good female, uh, young children singers as well. Uh, so again, yeah, it was a really, really top night uh, and we'll see what happens tonight. Right. OK, quick look at the real estate. The weather this morning, still very, very hot. Just to remind you, we are still in cap five in regards to uh, fires. So please, please, please be very careful when you're out and about that you don't inadvertently cause a fire. Once again, stay out of cordoned areas. Uh, remember that there is a curfew in place. All right. As well. Uh, that is in areas, in wooded areas, etc., that are out of bounds. You're not allowed in those areas after six o'clock at night until six o'clock in the morning, because if you are caught in there, you could be arrested as a suspected arsonist. So once again, please have some common sense where you go on your bikes and on your uh, quad machines going off on the beaten trail that you don't inadvertently cause a fire. So, um, uh, and as for the weather today, uh, thank you to the lovely Amanda for your little weather forecast. She says, morning, Ginge. Weather today is going to be hot. <laughs> really? Uh, I can hear the cricket singing. And she says the temperatures today are going to be 32 degrees, but it'll feel like 36. Uh, and have a great day. Right. OK. Uh, the news today is very mixed. There's been a lot going on within the last 24 hours. And um, I need really to get straight down to it. But just before I do, because I'll probably forget if I don't, uh, can I just say a quick hello to Paul Gerard? I do apologize for confusing you with a gentleman called Steve. Uh, I did make mentions about uh, Steve uh, selecting certain tunes for Northern Soul music. I do apologize. So uh, I, 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 I'm, honestly, even last night, I had at least three different sets of people come to me thanking me for the podcasts uh, they said that for their perspective they've really helped them through the winter and also it's made them make decisions on their holidays as well so once again can i just thank those people come and thank me last night and uh, once again uh, i do apologize to paul jared for confusing you with steve i think it was steve mitchin i think it was uh, so again and also your son uh, lewis actually paul what a good singer uh, he was as well last night I've also been told to say hello to Dave Matthews uh, because his wife, Patricia, she's having a birthday today. Uh, I think Dave's gone fishing actually as well. So uh, you better make sure you catch something uh, when you come back. Uh, otherwise, you won't be in the good books. All right. But anyway, happy birthday, Patricia. I hope you have a fantastic day and uh, he treats you well after a day out fishing. All right. Uh, can I also say another hello to Teresa Ann Huggett as well? Uh, she sent me a little message. I've got to say congratulations to Connor Stroud, who proposed to Ali Ardenti, and he proposed to her in Italian, and she said yes, and they proposed yesterday uh, while on holiday here in Zakynthos, which I think is really sweet. And I've also got to mention, can I just say thank you to Stefan down in Agia Sostis, uh, for send, oh sorry, uh, Marathea, sorry, I do apologize, in Marathea, who told me 
Guess who's on the island at the moment? Yeah, it looks like Eric Clapton is here at the moment on Zakynthos. His yacht has been spotted uh, in the bay in Kerry, so he may have come ashore for a little bit of a wander. Um, can I just say a quick hello to Mike Elves? Now, Mike Elves has the notoriety of uh, being basically, he was a drummer for a while in the herd, and he said that he actually jammed with Eric Clapton in a pub somewhere. This gentleman came in, he said, looking rather disheveled, opened his guitar case, didn't say a word, and he played with the band that he was with at the time. And it was only after they'd realised uh, the gentleman had left that they realised it had been Eric Clapton that he'd been jamming with. So maybe, uh, Mike, Eric Clapton is coming looking for you here on Zakynthos. So again, that's a good bit of happy news for the day anyway. Um, I'm not gonna go into flight arrivals today. Jane is gonna be spending a lot of today down at the airport. It, I need to get down to the infections at the moment because at the moment there's been a record amount of infections here recorded in Greece uh, in within the last 24 hours. You might remember yesterday, uh, we'd had 2,000 628 new infections across the country. Well, today I've got a report that in the last 24 hours, we've had 4,608 new infections, bringing the total now to 566,812 since the pandemic started uh, last year. Um, also, as uh, I, um, entries into the country, that's also up as well. 19 were recorded in my last report. and this report, 23 new infections were recorded at entry points into the country. Now, when it comes to <clears throat> islands of interest, where we keep an eye on their stats in comparison to ours uh, for Pacific reasons, uh, Mykonos, the island that we kind of follow, because whatever happens in Mykonos, you can guarantee it's going to happen here. Uh, basically, Mykonos has had 18 new infections in the last 24 hours. That's up on the 16 on the day before. And before that day, there was 22. Now, Rhodes at the moment, they've had a very significant increase. Uh, yesterday, I reported 68 new cases on Rhodes. Well, today, 122 new cases on Rhodes. Uh, when you consider that yesterday they had 68, the day before that they had 64, and the day before that they had 81, uh, the cases are rising up there in Rhodes. Now, Lefkada, that's our little neighbour just further up the road in the Ionian, a little small island, uh, they've had a significant increase as well. Yesterday I reported that they had 12 cases, <clears throat> And today I can report that they've had 33 new cases on that little island. Um, as for Corfu, and as I've said to you, Corfu seems to have been just trolling along uh, without any restrictions on them, where we had restrictions placed upon us. But Corfu, within the last twenty uh, in the last twenty four hours, they've had sixty eight new cases. Where the day before they'd had fifty, and the day before that they had thirty one, and the day before that they had sixty one. Uh, when it comes to Kefalonia, our neighbours across the street, as it were, <clears throat> they've also had an increase as well. Uh, they've had uh, ten new cases, which is up on the eighth from yesterday. And the day before that, they were six. And the day before that, they were 19. So again, their epidemiology is really up and down. It's like a roller coaster. Um, now, when it comes to Zakynthos, I've got to be honest, we've had quite an increase uh, in detected cases here on the island. Uh, today, we had 27 new cases reported. Yesterday, we'd had 15. The day before that, we'd had 14. The day before that, we'd had eight. So again, our epidemiology also has been on the, on the rise as well within the last 24 hours. So at the moment, I, I, I've actually realized I haven't tallied up the whole scores at the moment, but put it this way, Zach and Thos now is over uh, 300 cases have been reported for the month of uh, August, which far exceeds any of the other months for infection rates here uh, in, uh, in, in the season or in the year, actually. 
um, when it comes to deaths at the moment, believe it or not, deaths have actually just dropped off ever so slightly across Greece. Yesterday, I reported 34 new deaths across the country. Uh, today, it's 32 new deaths across the country. That brings the death toll now to 13,466. The average age of most people, 79 years of age, 96% uh, of them have underlying health problems or were over the age of 70. And once again, our condolences to families that have been affected. Um, <clears throat> when it comes to the ICUs at the moment, the ICU numbers again are starting to creep up again across the country. Uh, 319 on yesterday, today 326, 190 of those are male, 136 of those are female. And once again, that is a, a cause for concern at the moment within the media and within the government, obviously, that the numbers in ICUs are starting to creep up as well. Again, the average age of those people in the ICUs is 67 years of age, uh, have 83% of them have underlying health issues or are over the age of 70. Right, um, today's news then, um, basically St. Dennis is, is taking a little bit of centre stage at the moment. Um, it's been 304 years since the relocation of St. Dennis from the monastery island of Strafada to Zakynthos and the religious <coughs> events culm culminating culminated uh, last night uh, to mark that 304 anniversary of the relocation uh, with solemn vespers. Uh, this year too, the celebrations were very different in previous years due to the pandemic and the strict measures that were put into place to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. And uh, after all, it says uh, it, it made common sense. This is the press writing this rather than me. It made common sense as the case is constantly increasing. The epidemiology picture throughout the country does not show any sign of improvement. Anyway, yesterday, in fact, there, there was a record number of cases across Greece. Uh, now, the litany uh, did not take place. Uh, believers followed precautionary instructions from COVID-19 of wearing masks, using disinfectant and keeping their distance. Uh, the Holy Diocese had already informed last week that rules would apply uh, this year the same as they were last year. Uh, the religious events continued with the official procession of the relic of St. Dennis, but that actually happened inside the uh, church of St. Dennis and it didn't obviously go out into the street. He only went to the doors where the doors were open so people could look in if they wished, uh, but St. Dennis obviously stayed very much inside the church church and didn't go out actually into the public as he would do and in normal years basically St Dennis would go out and people who suffer from disease and illnesses would lie on the road and hopefully the passing of St Dennis would actually create a miracle that's another one of the um, beliefs within the Greek Orthodox Church here in the uh, sainthood of St Dennis that he can cure you of disease and illness and it's not uncommon to see people lying waiting for St Dennis to pass them and uh, hopefully a miracle may occur. Anyway, there were reports made of comments about a sermon that was made by the Archbishop of Zakynthos concerning the indifference uh, that has been shown by the locally elected representatives who actually left the church early before the end of the service. Now, the reason for this is because of the restoration work that is going on on the island of Strafada. Now, this is the island where St. Denis uh, so his body was hidden. It was also the island where he was consecrated uh, before he was then brought back to Zakynthos. Anyway, the island basically has a monastery on it. And again, there is plans for that monastery to be rebuilt. And again, it becomes another location uh, for followers to go to. And also it's another interesting location for people to basically come and visit. Anyway, he actually credited the mayor as saying he was the only like elected official that actually stayed right through to the end of the service, didn't be a hasty retreat uh, to dodge any questions coming from the archbishop as to why hasn't work started yet 
on the uh, reconstruction on the area of the uh, island. But anyway, the second Thos mayor, he said, was credited for staying. But then again, he has no responsibility over that project at all. But at least he stayed till the end. Anyway, the latest information concerning what's going on with the island of Strafada is that the contractor and those contracted secure to do the job, they still need to have that approved by the Court of Auditors. And the contractor is expected to be settled in September and the delays have been attributed to the large bureaucracy that is required with such a high budget project uh, and I forgot to actually find I can't remember what the amount of money is but it runs into the millions basically and basically the first task is that they're going to put a port in actually on the island uh, a proper port so that people can dock easily uh, there uh, you could do a pilgrimage and i've not seen a pilgrimage being advertised for a couple of years now where people can go and visit the island is unsafe because of earthquake damage and the monastery has been seen as being unsafe as well uh, because of earthquake damage uh, there used to be a monk who lived there on his own but he passed away or he retired and then passed away and so nobody is there shall we say keeping an eye on the place but anyway uh, we'll see if it all happens and see if it all comes together uh, just to remind you about 11 o'clock today there's going to be another procession with inside uh, the again the uh, church of St. Dennis uh, and then his uh, r remains will be then reinterned uh, into the reliquary uh, within and maybe we'll hear some gunfire etc etc as that happens also interestingly as well other aficionados at the St. Dennis's Day uh, memorial celebrations uh, included the Catholic Archbishop of Corfu, uh, Zakynthos and Kefalonia. Um, yeah, there is an Archbishop for those people of that faith and he was also asked to assist uh, in the celebrations uh, of the sainthood of uh, St. Dennis. So again, uh, uh, once again, just to remind you that this island is very unique in that we have a Catholic church here. I know the Catholic Church is really busily used actually on Sundays for services a lot of Polish like to go as always and and the Brits and the Irish as well that want to go to church on a Sunday so again you can go to church on a Sunday at the Catholic Church here uh, in St Marco Square if you're looking to find it anyway um back again to the the sad news of the nine-year-old boy that was electrocuted uh, the parents of the nine-year-old boy who died of electric shock on saturday night uh, while playing hide and seek with his friends in Silla V. Uh, local press has reported about how heartbroken they are. Uh, the medical examiner of the forensic medical services of Patra, Angelique Tesco, released the details of the autopsy uh, to, as well. And according to the autopsy, the little lad actually did die from the electric shock that was inflicted upon him. Anyway, uh, going back to the story about his death, the child was playing with his friends next to his house uh, when he went to hide behind the hotel, a hotel's air conditioning uh, facilities. Uh, one of them seems to have had a power outage, which then hit the child. Anyway, um, the nine-year-old was transported to the uh, General Hospital of Zakynthos, but unfortunately it was too late, and despite the efforts of the medical staff there, uh, the young lad passed away. Now, the tragic parents still cannot believe that they've lost their little angel. Uh, they said, we will reach the end of the case. The father said, speaking to Ionian Television, in a trembling voice, I I've lost my angel, an angel left. I do not believe it. I talk about it and I think it is a lie. I do not believe that our child is gone <clears throat> from life. The pain only me and a mother, the child left for no reason for 30 euros not to have a piece of net so that children could not go there. Uh, we will not leave what has happened like that. So in other words, the family are, are looking for justice at the moment. Now, interestingly, the Zakynthos uh, office, uh, pr prosecutor's office, uh, requested a preliminary investigation into the causes of the tragedy. And the hotel manager and the electrician uh, 
had been released after their arrival. However, no word has been mentioned about the maintenance man that, again, uh, was being sought on Saturday. Um, interestingly, though, the lawyer of the hotel owner, uh, Paniotis Kefalonis, uh, he issued a statement. Uh, he said, um, my case was assigned on Saturday night when the representative of this family company was arrested on Sunday. It was reported to the Zakynthos Public Prosecutor's Office that he and the electrician were released as a preliminary examination was ordered to an act for which uh, he may he must be prosecuted. A criminal prosecution will be instituted by the prosecutor. This is still the statement. Uh, by a preliminary investigation will be conducted and whatever is needed in order to draw safe conclusion for the prosecution, that should be brought. Our principal belief, uh, and believe me, uh, he cannot speak. He said the owner is devastated as his whole family it was a tragedy and he said an angel left this world what can this man say anyway uh, at the end of the statement <clears throat> uh, that was the, the end of the statement uh, the body of the young lad was then taken after the autopsy to the family's hometown in albania where relatives and friends said goodbye uh, to the nine-year-old angel. That's how they've described him in the Greek press. So once again, case is still ongoing. Um, I can't really say any more than that because there is a legal investigation going on and we're going to have to wait and see what the outcome is. And those people have been asking me what happened about the maintenance man. Nothing's been said about the maintenance man at the moment. So I'm not sure whether he's still in the picture for this or not. But at the moment, nothing official has been said reference uh, the location of him. Uh, interestingly, <clears throat> the news today seems to be all about Silvi at the moment. Um, the sewage leaking in Planos in Silvi uh, has had business owners and residents asking for immediate solutions uh, from the municipal authority in the area of Planos, which is suffering, uh, trying to find a, a solution to the sewage. Now, I know where we are at Magdalena's, if you go down the back uh, by the bowling alley area along that location, um, <clears throat> the other week, uh, the sewage was coming up through the ground there. I thought it was an issue that had been fixed, actually, and I was actually commenting uh, just a, a short while ago to the owners of businesses in that area about how I'm really pleased they've managed to sort that issue out. But again, that issue has just been basically a, uh, a plaster, shall we say, on a cut. It hasn't actually solved anything. Anyway, according to the local council, for the past 21 years, uh, half measures have been taken and no substantial interventions have been made. Of course, the network, which has been maintained, is constantly causing problems. And another one occurred last Thursday afternoon when there was a leak in the streets and the Demos had to go and clear it up and hose the streets down and get rid of the uh, pollution that was there on the streets. Now, the leader of the Together We Change Zakynthos faction, George Amiris, uh, speaking to the Amira about uh, this well-known problem that has plagued businessmen and residents of the area, said, I found out there was a leak of sewage in uh, Planos, and because there was a meeting of the board of Demos on Friday, August the 13th, I have asked them to make this decision. For the issue, I expect there to be an approach or a solution to the problem, on Thursday, the Demos blockade went and I was there when it arrived. In fact, it was washing the roads and the fields to the point where the leak had taken place. The council dealt with the issue. And I'm waiting for the intervention in the area to be implemented. Legislation must be observed, which is very clear on these issues. The hotel units <clears throat> have environmental impact studies for their operation and there must be interventions. Um, once again, can I just say that the mayor has inherited this problem from previous administrations and we've known for years that uh, a lot of these hotels were getting built uh, and to be honest, uh, there was not much thought given for the extra sewage and the extra uh, requirements of water that was going to be put upon the infrastructure within Sillaby for this expansion of all of these hotels. And so therefore, a lot of it is um, 
what was decided at the time of the building of these hotels, whether there was proper, shall we say, observance of uh, the rules and regulations in regards sewage and etc. from the hotels that were being built or it being expanded upon with extra rooms, whether measures were being made to make sure that there was the proper sewage infrastructure and water infrastructure to deal with the extra load that they were going to put upon it. If you think about it, Kalamaki was always uh, actually a little bit ahead of the game here in the fact that they put their sort of mainline sewage in, which was able to cope with the extra expansion of hotels. Uh, but that same expansion of sewage facilities hasn't really been seen properly in Sillaby. So in some ways, it's a very, very big issue and it's a very big problem to try and fix. Anyway, it seems that the president of the local community, uh, Mr. Galamus, uh, he expressed his indignation and referred to the great efforts made by the entrepreneurs themselves to keep the area clean and protected. He said, we pay 600,000 euros every year for a sewer that did not even enter even half a euro and no one bowed to the problem. I told the mayor that so far it does not provide to bend the problem otherwise to give it up. As for Mr. Aramis, I want to inform him that he has always been uh, the president of the Diaz. Tell us what has what they have done all these years to improve the sewage system. Everyone should be ashamed regarding the investigation by the mayor at the pumping station of Planos, uh, the, the, uh, Mr. Gula stated. The mayor saw this disgrace, some caps rotten from the time I took over as president. I brought them out and I've taken photos of them. We are left with only words and today uh, they came to change them and they understand that they have the responsibility I think basically what he's referring to there is basically this is, as I've already said, an ongoing situation from many previous administrations, not just uh, the present mayor's administrations. Basically, the previous administrations just basically passed the buck to whether was going to pick up the mantle of power further down the road. And uh, shall we say a certain mayor uh, from a few years ago, I shall not name him, but it, we will all know locally who we're talking about, was very quick to get deals through for hotels and making sure that they could go ahead and build without really looking at the infrastructure in regards to the sewage and water within Sillaby and that these extra units that are being built because in some ways you would make sure that these units could be self-contained in some way so that their sewage and that could be stored on site, then obviously pumped away by private contractors, etc. But whether that was done or not, I don't know because I don't know the ins and outs of every hotel. Maybe some hotels opted for that measure or maybe some hotels said, well, we'll pay the money and you'll link us to your sewage system. And we're happy with that because it's not our responsibility. Trust me, it is your responsibility at the end of the day. If you decided to cut corners on the building of your hotel uh, because you decided just to pay off somebody to get connected, shall we say, uh, rather than looking at the impact you're going to have probably on businesses further down the street or further up the road from you uh, who are basically getting your waste being pumped out in the street in front of their business. And there's quite a few places I could name, I'm not gonna name them, who have this on a very regular basis around where they are. Anyway, and uh, and finally, uh, this is a big story at the moment. Um, and uh, my broadcast is probably gonna go on a bit long today, but I don't care, I need to talk about this. Uh, the Greek health minister announced plans on Tuesday to impose new testing requirements and attendance restrictions on people who aren't vaccinated against COVID-19. Now, the measures include requiring weekly or twice weekly testing for vaccinated workers and allowing access to certain indoor venues only to those who are vaccinated or have a certificate verifying they have recovered from COVID-19 in the last six months. Now, the health minister, Vasily Keklas, said the new measures were punitive. Could, could you believe that? They were punitive. 
Uh, but what we must do as a responsible state, yeah, as a responsible state, you've got to bully people into uh, having something that they don't want and they would like the choice to have it or not. Anyway, he further went on to say it is our obligation towards all those who lost the battle before the vaccines became available. OK, right. Now, um, I don't see that's helping those people, to be honest, at the end of the day. It was a different time then to what's going on. Uh, would have some of those people who lost their lives, would they have wanted the vaccine? Again, we can't ask them because they're not with us anymore, whether they would have made the choice or not. But it's about the choice. You choose whether you have it, not you're bullied into having it or you're, as they are doing now, ramping up the pressure to have the vaccine. So he said, in our obligation towards the millions of citizens who spent 18 months of the pandemic being careful for themselves and fellow citizens who stayed up nights for weeks caring for patients who shut their shops and lost their jobs in this huge pandemic who worked remotely, who studied remotely. Don't you think that unvaccinated people were doing the exact same? OK, everybody was doing it, whether you were vaccinated or not and I would think the unvaccinated were probably being more careful than the vaccinated who'd been sold the lie that the vaccine will protect you when in fact we're now starting to learn it will protect you in sorts but will not cure you so you're just as likely to catch it whether you're vaccinated or unvaccinated and also when you think about it the unvaccinated in some ways are safer to be around and the reason why because we're already being tested twice a week if you didn't already realize mr minister who's supposedly running this we're already being tested twice a week and i know as a unvaccinated person who gets tested twice a week i do not have the virus i am not carrying the virus I could be an employee who's already been double vaccinated, who doesn't have to test as one of the privileges of having the vaccine is that you don't need to test. Uh, another ill inconvenience that's been removed. However, as a vaccinated person who could still be asymptomatic, you could still be spreading the virus completely oblivious uh, because basically you're not being tested because you're double vaccinated. So there you go. That is another point to your argument that I've just shot a massive great hole in. However, getting back to his statement. Anyway, Clinis has also said that the measures will be in effect from September the 13th until March the 31st. Under the new regulations, all private and public sector workers without a certificate proving vaccination or recent recovery from COVID-19 will have to undergo one rapid test per week. Well, thank you very much. You've now dropped it down to one a week. So again, that's going to be a bit easier now. So I don't have to do it twice a week, uh, much to my inconvenience. But I do it because I have to do it. And because you know what? I want to know whether I'm safe or not. And guess what? Thank you for dropping it down from twice a week to once a week as of the September the 13th. Anyway, uh, however, he uh, I've got to change that now. However, he says two tests per week will be required for people working in academia, tourism, restaurants, cafe, bars and in inter in, and in entertainment productions. I suppose that's me and all of those, as well as school and university students. Well, as I've already said, we've already been tested twice a week and I've already shot a hole in that. So again, yeah. So what? That doesn't make any change, all right, as far as we're concerned at the moment. All hot air and no effect, if you ask me. Anyway, uh, however, the tests will be conducted at private facilities with a 10 euro cost. We knew we we're going to pay for it at some point. And the cost will be paid by the individuals who are to be tested. And the only people who will be eligible for free tests are going to be school students and just as well and as rightly as it should be. But we knew at some point that the free testing was going to stop and that uh, basically at the end of the day, we were going to have to put our hands in our pockets and also pay. 
uh, as well. Anyway, um, <clears throat> stressing that more than 90% of COVID patients in Greece's intensive care units are unvaccinated. Uh, Kilka said indoor entertainment venues, restaurants, bars and cafes will only be accessible to vaccinated or recently recovered customers with the verification checks conducted at entrances through an app that scans COVID-19 certificates. So there we go. It looks like we are going to get an app at some point. I hope it's a damn sight better than the track and trace they don't talk about anymore in the UK or the NHS app, which has had all sorts of problems and the old pinging that's been going on because uh, they haven't realised that GPS is already set with a fault in it so it's not too accurate, all right? So terrorists could use it to uh, direct bombs to their target rather than just some way off from their target. But anyway, the other interesting thing is this. Get, wait till you hear this one, all right? Unvaccinated people will be able to enter indoor movies, theatres, museums, archaeology sites and gyms only with the proof of a negative rapid test conducted up to 48 hours earlier. So again, got to plan me going to the pictures 48 hours uh, previous as to whether they will let me in. But the minister also said uh, venues will also get this, right? Now, this is the madness of it. The minister said venues will have the right to admit only vaccinated customers if they wish. So there you go. The minister said venues will have the right to admit only vaccinated customers if they wish. So again, if you're only allowing vaccinated customers if they wish, does that mean you can let unvaccinated in as well? There we go. This little area of greyness that hasn't yet been thoroughly thought out and sorted out. And so how will that work? That's what I want to know. But the other interesting thing is this, is that masks will be mandatory for everyone in indoor public areas and in outdoor crowded areas. So even though you've been doubly vaccinated, uh, you're still going to have to wear a mask. All right. So there you go. And also, if you want to travel here in Greece, proof of vaccination, recovery or a negative rapid test within 48 hours will also be required to travel by plane, train, boat or long distance bus for anyone aged 12 and over. So even children now have to present a negative test or be fully vaccinated before they're allowed to get on a bus uh, and go traveling. Now, for children aged between 5 to 12, a self-test is acceptable with the results uploaded to the government website, which we're already doing anyway, uploading. But again, again, testing children of 5 to 12, uh, again, self-testing is acceptable. OK, that's what you're trying to make it. We should be asking questions when we're testing our children like this. A five year old being tested and a five year old also being forcibly vaccinated as well for COVID-19. I've seen what's been going on in Australia and I'll tell you what, it makes my hair curl with the way that the Australians are handling all of this. And their epidemiology has been way lower than uh, what Greece has been or any other place in some respects. And also when you look at New Zealand, where they locked down for one case, one case, and they locked the whole of New Zealand down. And it makes you wonder, the Taliban are running riot over in Kabul. You put the Australian army on the streets to stop people moving about for a very few cases of COVID. I think you've got your priorities wrong there somehow. I really, really do. And I know a lot of Australian forces people are really ashamed and upset with the way that the Australian army has been deployed and also being deployed illegally as well. Uh, not within the constitution of Australia, where a federal government is the, per is the people responsible for de deploying troops, not the local governor for the region. But again, uh, they were talking about Australian troops actually questioning that order 
about whether they were lawfully being deployed on the streets uh, in in Australia uh, to implement COVID restrictions. Again, the world is going absolutely to hell in a handbasket at the moment. But anyway, uh, that's it from me for today. Can I just say thank you to those people who are tuning in? I don't want to depress you with the news, all right? But the news at the moment, it's just one thing to the next. But at the moment, uh, if you were in Magdalena's last night, uh, you would you wouldn't believe that we were living in such trying times at the moment. Can I also thank people for their behaviour? Uh, as well as sticking to the rules as well, uh, sitting on the seat to sing, etc. as well. Uh, once again, uh, some of the people who decided to break the rules the other night uh, obviously got short thrift yesterday and uh, decided that, that maybe Magdalena's isn't the place for us to act like dickheads. So we'll go somewhere else and act, a dick, act like a dickhead in their place. So again, uh, so those people, you know who you are. All right. Uh, again, uh, your presence, again, was not missed at all last night. So once again, uh, we do what we can. As I always say, we just get on with it. We muddle through. Uh, we'll see what happens at the end of this week. We're going to see these new draconian measures that are going to be in place. We're waiting for Boris to make his announcement as well this week with bated breath as to uh, whether things are going to stay the same or whether things are going to change. And hopefully British tourism is going to get another month here coming to Greece without too much hassle for you. Because again, do you know what? It's the hassle that puts people off more than the more than anything else, it's the filling in forms, it's the waiting in queues, it's being tested even though I've been double jabbed. Doesn't that entitle me uh, to be able to go where I want to go and do what I want to do? But no, I'm still being restricted, even though I've conformed and done as I've told and I've been a good citizen and I've thought about the greater good of everybody else, blah, 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 blah. Uh, again, at the end of the day, um, we just pray that, uh, if you remember last time, we were praying for Boris's announcement and great things. Boris said, yeah, no trouble, carry on. Things won't change. And they didn't. And what happened within 12 hours? Greece decided to put Zakynthos into the red and then we had that stupid lockdown for a week, which then eventually got overturned, even though they wanted to extend it. So again, I'm pleased that a little bit of people power came into play there. And basically, uh, we didn't get that uh, shut down. Anyway, uh, Ken Grant has just said, as the song goes, always look on the bright side of life if you can, Ginge. Thank you very much for that, Ken. I will take that as a fantastic comment. Right, I'm going to have to go now. Oh, yes, just quickly before I do disappear away. I managed yesterday to upload, upload two days worth of uh, podcasts that I couldn't get up. Trust me, the internet at the moment is really running very, very badly here in Greece at the moment. Uh, so at least uh, Saturday and Sunday's podcasts have gone up onto YouTube. You can watch them on there if you want to catch up. I will try and get uh, yesterday's and today's up online if I can. Uh, if not, I will try and get the YouTube site up to date as and when uh, the system will allow me. But anyway, thank you for your support. Thank you for tuning in. I'll keep my ear to the ground. If I hear anything, trust me, I'll let you know. ta -ra.